What if there's a magic in the insignificance, in the details? Instead of the strategy, instead of the big vision, what if we could focus on the insignificant? If you can train yourself to pay attention, you will see things other people don't see. You will understand how this world around you works. So what is the future? Well, the future for me is about trends. And I talk a lot about trends, business trends, trends in our behavior, why we do the things we do, and how that's changing from year to year. And my definition of a trend is a curated observation about the accelerating present. So I don't believe that a trend is something that's going to happen at some uncertain point in the future, but that we're just guessing at right now. I believe that a trend has something to do with the present. And if we can learn to predict the accelerating present, that is the things that are happening right now, that will happen more frequently and with more impact in the future, then we can start to predict the future. Rohit is the Wall Street Journal best-selling author of five books on topics as wide-ranging as the future of business, how to build a brand with personality, and why leaders always eat left-handed. He spent 15 years leading brand strategy at Ogilvy and Leo Burnett Marketing Agencies, is a two-time TEDx speaker, teaches marketing and public speaking at Georgetown University, and has been invited to deliver non-boring keynote presentations at events in 27 countries around the world. We can't tell people that what we're selling is something and expect them to not see through it. Is this product actually coming from the Swiss Alps or are we just Evian spelled backwards? Are we just naive? Donut seeds. <laughs> this is the next big product on Amazon. And the big problem is that there's so much stuff out there that it's very difficult to know what to pay attention to. So I wanna take you inside that problem a little bit and talk about why it has become such a problem. And I think the first place we have to start is by taking a little bit of the blame, right? More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Therefore, it must be good for you. But the problem that all of this leads to is we're in the middle of a believability crisis. It's not just affecting people selling certain types of products in certain categories. This is affecting all of us. It is harder to be believable today. So what are you gonna do about that? How are you going to be more believable? It has to do with being able to deliver on one thing, and that one thing is trust. If we're trusted, we sell more products. Trust is not something that's given anymore. Trust is something we have to earn. And what they really want is an experience, something that lasts for longer, something that doesn't happen necessarily all the time. But when it does happen, we remember it. Another brand that does this amazingly well in a slightly quirky way is the Hans Brinker Budget Hotel in Amsterdam, which says that they've been proudly disappointing travelers for 40 years. Hans Brinker Budget Hotel, Amsterdam. It can't get any worse. <laughs> but we'll do our best. They have brochures with asterisks next to everything that's not included. <laughs> including maid service, lamps, curtains, windows, bed sheets. Why would any hotel brand much less one that actually wants to succeed, use marketing like this. And this is all true, by the way. It's not like a fake ad created by someone. This is a real place in Amsterdam. You can go there tomorrow and stay there. Why would a brand use this type of advertising? Well, the thing is, they're a budget hotel. They're a hostel. And so the people who stay there are young 20-somethings who are backpacking across Europe, people who don't have a lot of money. Now, somebody who is 20-something backpacking through Europe, what's the thing that's most important to them? Is it comfort and luxury? No, it's the story, right? It's mostly about the story that you tell. Be human, be real, be truthful. It makes a difference. The sad fact of media is this video, which was titled Squirrel Dodges Lamborghini, was the number one video several years ago for three days straight. So how do we get past that? Because this is not information overload, this is noise overload. How are we going to ignore that noise and actually figure out what matters. Curation is the key. Curation is the one thing. That's what turns noise into meaning. One of the things people talk about and think about when it comes to trends is the trends are like finding a needle in a haystack. And the haystack method is the way that I curate trends. It's the process behind curating trends. And it's got five steps. Gathering, aggregating, naming, elevating, improving. So for me, gathering ideas means ripping things out of magazines, printing out articles, spreading out all of those things at the end of the year to eventually end up with the trend report. I think trend curation is spending most of your time taking the hay and gathering it so that you can put the needle in the middle of it. The principle of not over planting your field 
is a perfect analogy for something we do in business all the time, isn't it? We come up with all sorts of ideas that we never follow through on. We have all sorts of meetings that we probably don't need. We're overplanting our field in the business context. And by looking outside of that context, by engaging your curiosity, you see something that you usually wouldn't. You see a pattern that you might have otherwise missed. And not only would you be able to engage that curiosity to see those patterns, but you'd also be further along to predicting the future.